Okay, I think we can get started. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth webinar of the 2024 CPGIS Educational Webinar Series in the topic of GIS and the allergy and the environment. And my name is Tao Hu, and I am from Department of Geography at Oklahoma State University. And today we are very honored to have Dr. Bi Yu Chen from Wuhan University as our guest speaker for this uh, webinar. At the beginning, I would like to have a brief introduction of Dr. Chen. And Dr. Chen is a full professor at the Key Laboratory of Information Engineering in Surveying, Mapping, and Remote Sensing at Wuhan University, China. His major research interests span GIS for transportation, transport geography, behavior geography, spatial temporal big data analytics, and smart city applications. He is the author of more than 60 articles in the leading SCI and SSCI journals in geography, GIS, and transportation fields, such as Annals of AAG, IJGIS, Journal of Transportation Geography, and Transportation Research, Part A to E. He is also an associate editor of several leading journals, including IEEE Transactions on Intelligent Transportation Systems, Travel Behaviors and Society, and Transport Metrica B. He also serves as the chairman for ISPRS Working Group on Geocomputation and Geosimulation. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Bi Yu Chen to start his presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Hu, for your kind introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm very honored to be here to share my research study on facility-based accessibility, a new research agenda by integrating facility choice behavior into the evaluation of play-based accessibility. Here's the outline of today's uh, presentation. First one, I will give the uh, accessibility research background. Then I will introduce the need for developing new research framework of uh, facility-based accessibility. Following that, I will give you three case study of uh, this new methodology. Finally, is a conclusion. Okay, now let's look at the background of accessibility. Accessibility concept is widely used in geography. Uh, it is defined as the easy with which urban service can be reached from a particular location or by individual at that location. It has many applications such as um, transportation planning, urban planning, and etc. Uh, for example, in, uh, in urban planning, we have a 15 minutes community uh, live unit planning or called 15 minute city. Uh, this uh, planning would like to provide sufficient accessibility to various service facility within 15 minutes work. Um, accessibility is widely used. Basically, you have a three components. The first one is land use component. Uh, for example, in, in the figure in the right hand side, left hand side, we can see they have a lot of facility distributed in, in, in the city. That is the spatial distribution of urban service facility. Basically, the service is not eventually distributed, but clustered at uh, city centers in, in many cities. The second component is transportation system. Uh, the figure in the middle show you the, the travel time uh, travel time condition in, in a city. Uh, the travel transportation system uh, represent the <coughs> travel cost between people and facility. Uh, so you the distant decay effect in, in the uh, activity scheduling. Uh, the final components is individual components. It, it describes the social spatial character of uh, peoples and cities or citizens. Uh, it also represents uh, human mobilities and facility choice behaviors, that is the individual behavior. 
Uh, this is a figure show you that these three uh, components are interconnected. Uh, this figure is, it, uh, is from uh, a seminar uh, work in accessibility uh, published in this, in this article. We can see that these three components are interconnected. Uh, the temporal components can be can be in, in integrated in the three component because transportation also have a time dependence, characters, land use component also have a uh, uh, temporal uh, characteristic. Um, uh, the accessibility concept is widely used. Uh, now we want we need to use this uh, concept. We need the accessibility measures. Uh, basically, in the literature, they have uh, two types of accessibility measure. The first one is play-based accessibility measure. It mainly consider the uh, transport and land use components for, um, for large-scale application in urban planning or, or transport planning. The another one is play-based uh, or people-based accessibility measure is uh, individual level. It consider the uh, all components, including the individual uh, behaviors in uh, this application. Uh, this, this accessibility is widely used in small scale applications in social inclusion or social equity or quality, quality of lives. Um, in this study, we focus on uh, large scale applications. So we uh, focus on a play-based accessibility measure. Uh, in the literature, the play-based uh, measure is generally defined as the sum or product of uh, a Chinese of and a distant decay function. We can see this formula is this AI represents the play-based accessibility at the location I. Uh, is equal to the product uh, summation of uh, a Chinese parameters and uh, distant decay factors. These play-based measures are easy for operations with a few of date, um, but you also have uh, limitations since it is divided in uh, more than uh, half a century ago. Uh, so it, it, it is oversimplified. Simplified. Uh, so uh, we only consider the, uh, the sp uh, proximity factors uh, so the uh, simplify oversimplify the many uh, behavior uh, dimensions. For example, the the parameters of a Chinese and the distant decays are usually determined arbitrary, or or we also we usually uh, set the distant decay into the, of into a, a single value for all facilities. But eventually, uh, people uh, consider the uh, uh, facility choice not, not only consider the uh, distant effect, but also consider many other factors, such as the uh, service level, uh, uh, price of the service, and the uh, level, hierarchy level of the, uh, the facilities, such as we would like to uh, travel a long distance to a famous restaurant, but we would like to go for a short distance for a local restaurant that is uh, represent the, the behaviors. So um, existing uh, play-based measure oversimplify the uh, facility choice behaviors. We will uh, introduce significant bias. Um, Nowadays, we all know that we have uh, um, many big data. So these big data provide opportunities for accessibility study. For example, from the land use, uh, for land use side, we now can assess uh, rich facility inf information, such as by such as many of POIs uh, provided in, provided by Google Map or by Two Map, and we also have a. Uh, uh, many uh, folding card data that is a uh, taxi trajectories and also have a uh, uh, smart card data that is, that is the trajectory for for bus operations. 
uh, list big data can use to monitor the uh, transportation uh, dynamics. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, many uh, behavior data such as mobile phone data, social media checking data. This kind of data provide us a new mean to uh, investigate uh, human uh, facility choice. Following this uh, big data opportunities, I would like to propose a new research framework of facility-based accessibility. That is to uh, extend conventional play-based accessibility research framework by uh, incorporating citizens' facility choice behavior. Um, this can, well, can significantly improve the uh, accuracy of the accessibility measure for, for the large scale applications such as urban planning and uh, transportation planning. Uh, to illustrate the advantage of this new uh, research framework, I would like to give you a free case study. Uh, now I would like to uh, show you the first st study that is incorporate citizens' distinct, distinct uh, preference to various food retailers. Okay, now let's look at the case study one. As we all know, uh, healthy uh, is highly related to diary behavior. Unhealthy diary are associated with obesity and many uh, disease. Uh, in the social ecology uh, theory, the suggests that uh, diary choice and healthy outcome are shaped by the food environments. So uh, the provision of sufficient access to healthy and affordable food for anyone is increasing regarded as a private priority for many governments around the world. Food environment is typically invalidated by play-based measure, as I mentioned in, in, in the uh, previous uh, session. Uh, uh, you usually use a uh, cumulative opportunity measure that is to evaluate the uh, full accessibility of a location using number of food retailers with local neighborhood as defined by Barbara Zoom around home locations. In your, this model, this measure only consider the promiscuity uh, factor uh, to the food uh, retailers. But as I mentioned, uh, we may consider uh, much research uh, study have focused on the investigating the uh, empirical relationship between food environment and uh, healthy outcomes. But in reality, they have an inconsistent result. Some findings suggest a relationship between, uh, between these two components, but others find no significant relationship. I think one of the major reasons is that it is oversimplification of model of the uh, retailer choice behaviors. Um, uh, in literature, there have many empirical studies. They find that uh, uh, citizens' uh, food choice, uh, food, food consumption choice is very complicated behavior. Uh, for example, uh, in year of 2013, uh, uh, can you see though, they find that almost all participants did their primary food shopping at a large chain supermarket rather than shopping at a supermarket near this to, to, to their home. Uh, uh, another study conducted in year of 2015, they find that individual uh, obesity outcome have no significant relationship with the distance to coasted supermarket, but so a strong correlation with a distance to primary food shopping uh, size. Um, another uh, research find that widely employed definition of local environment cannot well cover the food uh, retailers actually investigated by uh, neighborhood residents, such as buffer zone of one or two miles of, a, of around home. Uh, this empirical finding uh, using these surveys highlight the complexity of uh, retailer choice behavior um, 
which further lead to heterogeneous travel distance to variance for retailers. So it is uh, necessary to incorporate the complexity of retailer choice behavior into the full accessibility evaluations to accurate quantify the full environment. Uh, one possible way to incorporate the heterogeneous travel distance to various uh, retailers into the full accessibility evaluations is to use service area measure. That is, we set appropriate uh, service size, service area size for each uh, retailers uh, to incorporate uh, uh, this uh, uh, heterogeneous travel distance uh, uh, caused by the complexity uh, facility choice behavior. But we also have a very challenging issue that is in remote unanswered how to eliminate appropriate service area size for all full retailers in a large study area. It is uh, extremely difficult. For, for this service area delimitation, uh, it is widely uh, investigated for shopping center uh, study, such as uh, uh, center, center, the center play theory. Uh, uh, theory. Uh, um, uh, shopping centers are usually uh, organized into a hierarchical structure. A field of centers at the upper uh, hierarchical positions with large service area. A large number of uh, centers at the lower hierarchical position with small uh, service areas. And the uh, least uh, 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 study in central play theory, they find that um, Factors uh, determine the hierarchical position of shopping centers, such as um, shopping center size, uh, retailer uh, needs, and the number of leisure out outlets. Uh, these are the factors determine the hierarchical position. But uh, little is, is known that uh, whether full retailers are organized into a hierarchical structure and how retailer choice preference determine the source service area size and the hierarchical position of retailers. Uh, to quantify the service area uh, the size, it is to uh, calibrate a distant decay function. That is, the, uh, this is the DIF represent the distance between the location I and the facility F. And uh, uh, this is the uh, equation left hand side uh, represent the frequency of this uh, visit, facility visit. Uh, this uh, equal to a function of the distant decay. Um, the service area size can be determined as the inverse accumulation probability function at a certain probability level, such as 18% of 85% of percentile. Um, they have uh, several uh, approach to to quantify the uh, distant decay function, such as we um, can make a uh, direct approach, that is, uh, to make fit surveys to delimit service area size of retailers. That is, we we make a survey for any uh, retail uh, full retailers that come come the uh, uh, customers where are they come from. That is the direct approach. Uh, another approach is half model and its variance. We formulate the probability of customer choice behaviors uh, using the travel distance, attractiveness, and the competitions. Uh, use, uh, uh, use the travel data or uh, other big data to calibrate the function. Um, then the last one is the hierarchical position estimation approach, that is to classify the uh, shopping centers into hierarchical level based on the, a set of attractive uh, factors. But these three approach cannot directly be used in our study to calibrate the distant decay parameters for all full retailers in a large study area. Uh, for example, the Direct approach cannot be used because we have generally have a very huge 
uh, food retailers in in a large cities uh, compared to a few shopping centers in in a in a city. Uh, half model is also uh, cannot be used because we we cannot validate validate the food training behavior uh, of the half model that is the uh, visit probability of a spectacle shopping center is proportional to the uh, visit utility of uh, customers. The hierarchical position estimation approach also cannot be used because the factor influence the position of the food retailers within the hierarchy cannot be can be different from those of shopping center. So we need to develop a new method uh, to quantify the service area of all food retailers in a large study area. So this, in this case, uh, in this case one, I would like to define our two objective research objective. The first one is to develop a new methodology for delimit service area size of food retailers by explicitly capturing the complexity of uh, Western's retailer choice behavior. The second objective is to investigate uh, how various food retailers in a large study areas are organized into a hierarchical structure and how various uh, Chinese factor influence the hierarchical uh, position of the food retailers and how the hierarchical structure of food retailers can impact the special pattern of food accessibility. The first objective uh, from the methodology perspective, the second objective are from the um, uh, empirical perspective. Uh, this is the methodology we we divide the uh, service area approach. That is, we calculate the number of uh, we we generate the service areas for each service area for each facility. Then we count how many how many uh, sub, uh, facilities uh, service area cover our location I, that is the uh, uh, full accessibility at location I. Uh, we propose a machine learning approach to delimit the service area size. We can divide it into uh, several steps. The first step, we use the, uh, a small uh, survey data to, uh, to represent the to invent to determine the hierarchical level and and their service areas. Uh, this is the this can be regarded as the uh, labels uh, labels in in machine learning. Uh, in the second step, we use this a few labels and and the uh, uh, rich information from the point of interest. Then we divide a, a semi supervised classification algorithm to classify all food retailers into hierarchical levels. The third step is that it is the validation uh, approach. We need to validate the, the classification accuracy. If this accuracy is satisfied, then we move to the, the last, last step. That is, we need to uh, investigate the uh, uh, factors uh, affect uh, uh, affect the uh, hierarchical choice, affect the uh, uh, hierarchical levels. Okay, now, now uh, we move to the uh, study area and the collection session. Uh, this study, we collect a, a, four, a free set of data. Uh, first one is a big, data, big point of interest data set. Uh, we select uh, Wuhan as a case study. Then uh, we collect uh, uh, seven, uh, seven, nine thousand full retailers for the whole Wuhan city. These retailers uh, are collected, the point of interest are collected at, by the Baidu map. Uh, it provides 10 full categories for, 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 any, uh, for any retailers. It is the distribution of the uh, full retailers in Wuhan city. This is the category of the uh, different food uh, retailers. We also collect uh, uh, 15, 15 challenge factors uh, to determine the 
hierarchical levels, the including for uh, retailer characteristic, including retailer type and average price and the retailer size and the uh, easy chain store uh, for building environment uh, characteristic. First one is within your shopping center. Uh, this is uh, better is select because they according the uh, central theory theories, theories that is the city centers uh, will may uh, usually attract a large uh, customers from uh, from large distance. The second uh, attract is a uh, second factors is the housing price. The third one is the nearby return numbers represent the competition effect or or the correlation uh, effect. The third one is a similar uh, retailer uh, retailer uh, uh, number that is represent the competition effect. Uh, the third one is the transportation accessibility factor that is the easy to assess the uh, parking locations and transportation hub such as metro stations or bus stops. The last one, last category is the word of mouth attributes, including user rankings and the uh, number of comments or number of images uploaded by users. And uh, the last one is represent the a famous uh, restaurant. These are the uh, 15 uh, Chinese factors determine the uh, individual's retailer choice behavior. Uh, the third, uh, the second uh, category of data is the uh, fit survey data. As I mentioned, the first step of my proposed approach is to uh, to uh, to divide the labels for a few representative uh, retailers. This uh, study I collected data for eighteen a for eighteen a representative food retailers uh, in, based on the questionnaires. Uh, we select this uh, representative. Uh, retailers. Then uh, uh, we ask uh, customers to to answer uh, several questions, such including where are you come from, what transport mode you made, and how long did it take, how often do you consume these food retailers, what's the purpose of your food chain chain. Uh, for each uh, food retailers, I we collect. 20 to 13 customers to make a re reliable uh, estimation for for this uh, retailer's uh, service area size. Uh, the, the last uh, data set is the transportation network set data set. We collect the network and then we also collect the tram fee condition from the Baidu data set. Uh, apart from the data for case study, we also collect uh, uh, data for validation purpose. That is, we collect uh, more than more than ten thousand of uh, customers' um, uh, uh, response uh, for 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 their cust uh, menu classification of for their tailor hierarchy. Um, Okay, now I report our um, um, empirical finding result. The first one is the uh, we identified the IQ level of 18A representative full retailers. For each uh, full retailers, we have a, we have a, uh, a set of observations. Uh, we can calculate the uh, mean travel distance for each. Uh, full retailers and the standard deviation of the uh, travel distance of uh, full retailers and the 18 percentile of the full uh, travel distance that is represent the service area size. Based on this three dimension, we made a, a class uh, clustering that is uh, unsupervised classification. Uh, we classified uh, our data set. Uh, we we find that they have a free category three hierarchical levels. The first one is a lower level. Uh, you only have uh, the need service area size only one kilometers uh, based on the uh, seven, 700 customer data. That is the 
lower level data, you have a small service area size. The second hierarchy is a middle level. Uh, the service area size is 7.5 kilometers. Um, the, and the last one is uh, uh, upper level food retailers. Uh, it, their service area size are 22, 20, uh, 25 kilometers. Um, um, we can see the distant decay effect is, is significant different for these three categories. Uh, the, the, large, the, the food retailers at the upper, upper hierarchical level, the distant decay effect is, is smaller. Uh, so this is the uh, first step we clear the uh, labels for 18 percent retailers. Then we determine the service area size for each full hierarchy, for each hierarchy. Then we, based on the uh, semi classification algorithm, we can determine the service areas. Uh, we can determine the hierarchical level for all full retailers in the whole city based on the uh, uh, label data and uh, uh, data without labels. And uh, uh, 15, uh, 15 facility choice factors. Then we pay made a classification. We find that uh, the, we, we can classify the uh, all full retailers into three uh, hierarchical levels. We find that the hierarchy, uh, but uh, facility at the upper level are clustered at the city city centers and. Uh, and the facilities at the second, um, at the middle level is uh, around the, uh, by the uh, hierarchical uh, upper levels. And the lower levels are uh, distributed uh, in the whole city. And the lower level, uh, number of uh, facilities in the lower level um, uh, dominate. Uh, number of uh, facility level at the upper level is, is much low, less. And this is the uh, uh, classification accuracy. We find that we, our proposed uh, machine learning method can achieve very high accuracy based on a validation data set. Uh, the, the accuracy is up to 19%. Uh, now this is the, the last step of our proposed method. That is, we need to validate the uh, Factor uh, inference for different for about fifteen uh, factors. Uh, this we use the shape value that it, that can consider the uh, nonlinear effect uh, of our proposed method. Uh, we they have a free uh, col different color represent the uh, 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 represent the. Um, uh, attribute uh, attribute contribution uh, to the total marginal contribution. We find that top five attributes contributed uh, to 18, 84 point, 84 percentage of total marginal contribution. That is the uh, waiting shopping centers and the is a famous restaurant and customers number number of comments number. Mm, uh, post by users and the number of nearby retailers and the uh, uh, number of chain uh, subway stations. These are the top five attributes. Uh, and uh, we use the four uh, three different uh, uh, classification classificator. Uh, they have a, a, a basically uh, quite uh, consist, consistent uh, result, uh, even though they are relatively different, but top, uh, top five are quite similar. Uh, now we move to the result for the uh, spatial uh, accessibility uh, measure. Uh, we, based on our uh, service area delimitation approach, we, we can determine the service areas for all 
fully tell us in, in the Wuhan city. That is, uh, we classified into three categories. In terms of upper levels, uh, middle levels, and low level. So based on this result, we set uh, service area size for each uh, food retailers. And uh, we calculate the spatial uh, pattern of food accessibility based on the service area approach. Uh, then we, this is these figures in the right hand side show you the spatial uh, pattern of the food accessibility in Wuhan. We can see you have a concern, concern, um, concentric pattern. Uh, we can find a distinct uh, peak near four commercial centers at uh, both sides of Yangtze River. This is uh, Yangtze River. These are the two peaks. Uh, four peak here. Um, now we would like to investigate the impact of a hierarchical structure of retailers on food accessibility. We find that they have a, uh, the, the food retailers in, in the whole city have a two routes. That is, lower level of uh, retailers count for over 93% of total retailers but it only contributed to uh, 13, uh, 3.7 uh, total accessibility. And the middle level and the upper level retailers come for only uh, 6.9 of total retailers, but it contributed to 19%, over 19% of total uh, full retailer, full accessibility. This is, this result is reasonable because the, Upper level um, retailers have a huge uh, retailers uh, service area size, so it can serve, uh, it, it can provide service, it can provide service to um, many citizens uh, in the city. Uh, even though the lower level facilities are, uh, the number of lower level facilities are very large, but their service area size is very small uh, in terms of one kilometers, so they only provide service to local uh, residents. So this finding is also consistent to uh, central theory, uh, central play theories. Um, then we investigate the uh, uh, conventional approach if we setting or uh, if we using a single service area size such as one kilometers for all retailers. Uh, this is the result uh, for, for the accessibility uh, calculation. Uh, we find that they have a significant different space, different pattern compared to our uh, uh, accessibility pattern calculated by free hierarchical level. Uh, we find that uh, due to the reduction of service area size, the total accessibility provided by middle level and upper level retailers was significantly underestimated by over 99%. That is a uh, huge uh, bios, that is huge bios. Um, so, um, so we made a uh, conclusion and a discussion on this, uh, uh, on this uh, case study one. From the methodology point of view, we propose a new machine learning method to delimit service areas and hierarchical levels of all food retailers in a large study areas. It made use of super unsupervised learning and semi-supervised learning and uh, uh, shared value technology. Uh, it can delimit the service area and hierarchical level of uh, over, over 79,000 of retailers with a high accuracy of 19%. It can, it can not only delimit the service area size and the hierarchical level of full retailers, but also can quantify the nonlinear effect of 15 attributes influence the service uh, retailers hierarchical levels. Uh, they have a, this study also have many empirical insight. Uh, firstly, uh, it uncover how food retailers in a large study areas organize into a hierarchical structure. 
along the line the, of the central play theory, fully tailored within Wuhan, within Wuhan city, revealed a distinctive hierarchical structure with respect to three hierarchical levels, namely lower level, middle level, and upper levels. The lower level uh, retailers have a large number of uh, large number of entities, but on a small service area size. Middle level and upper level retailers have a, a few retailers, but the, the largest service area size. Beyond, beyond this finding also uh, diverging from the classical central theory place, play theories, full retailers of relevance hierarchical level in Wuhan have a different spatial uh, distribution patterns. Uh, upper level retailers tend to cluster at the central commercial centers and transportation hub. Middle levels uh, retailers are lo located near uh, upper level retailers. Lower level retailers are uh, distributed across the entire uh, urban areas. Secondly, uh, this study quantified how retailers, uh, how, how residents retailer choice preference, uh, that is 15 attractive uh, factors, determine the hierarchical level of retailers. Previous study using the interview uh, of selective residents uh, observed that several attractive factors influence the residential uh, residents retailer choice behavior. In this study, we we use a big data and uh, machine learning technology. We quantify the uh, 15, uh, 15 factors uh, influence the uh, hierarchical levels of food retailers. We find that the accuracy is very high and the second is satisfying. Uh, the last one uh, it is we quantify. Uh, we uncover how retailer hierarchy shape food accessibility. Most existing food accessibility study using only uh, proximity factor in retailers' food choice uh, decision. So they only set a single service area size, for example, one kilometers to all food retailers. Uh, in this study, we find that the uh, retailer have a hierarchy. Uh, we consider the hierarchical uh, factors uh, into the accessibility study, we find that uh, retailers are at a hyper, higher position within the food retailer hierarchy dominate the food accessibility. Uh, using a single service area size of lower level retailers to all food retailers can significantly underestimate the total food accessibility um, and uh, overestimate the uh, accessibility in equity by over one by over one hundred percent. They also have uh, several implications for developing sustainable food policy because we uh, by this by aware of complexity of retailer uh, choice behavior in food uh, in their uh, food uh, policy decision makings, uh, which will lead to. Uh, heterogeneous service area size of various uh, food retailers. Uh, second is we need to provide uh, heavy food by retailers at the upper hierarchical level because this is uh, effective to way to promote equitable and healthy food uh, accessibility since the uh, upper level retailers dominate the uh, uh, accessibility in the whole city. And uh, a higher standard of food quality control so be given to these key uh, retailers at a higher uh, hierarchical position. Uh, this is the uh, this is the the case one. Um, uh, for the more for more details uh, you may refer to our recent uh, paper published in NOC of AAG uh, entitled How Retailer Hierarchy Shape for accessibility, a case study using machine learning method to delimit service areas and hierarchical level of full retailers. Uh, due to the time limit, 
I would like to give the case study two and three very briefly. The second, uh, the case study two is to we will incorporate the dynamic preference of food training at a different time of date at a different facilities. Uh, this is classical approach I just mentioned. And in this study, we propose a, a new a Chinese parameters. That is, we introduce a time dependent intensity of performing activity at a spectacle type of facility. For example, uh, for the this is a, a example of the uh, uh, micro uh, KFC. Uh, we can see a number of people, uh, number of customers have a K KFC is a significant variance at a different time of date. This can represent the uh, time variance intensity of our um, food, food, food consumption at the KFC. So this is a key uh, facility uh, behaviors, right? So uh, in this study, I introduced, uh, maybe introduced this behavior dimension. Uh, this is the result. This is the, uh, we made an empirical study on the several um, different uh, fast food restaurants. We find that uh, this, uh, this, uh, this seven uh, restaurants, even though they are different locations, but they have tend to have a similar temporal patterns because they have a, they have a, a similar uh, retailer type, okay? They are all fast food restaurants, provide similar service to the customer. Uh, we also collected the data for different types of uh, uh, food, uh, food retailers. We, we find that different retailers have a different uh, temporal variations of active uh, food purchasing. Uh, that is the uh, hot pot, Chinese restaurant, Western restaurant, and the bar and noodle house. Uh, so this approach can can capture the different uh, behavior dimension in time uh, in time dimension. Uh, this is a result of dynamic uh, accessibility that is uh, extension of the case study one by consider the uh, time dimension of the uh, behavior behavior dimension. Uh, I, they, because of time limit, I give very brief that uh, you may refer to our paper publishing uh, transport geography in year of 2018. Uh, the last one is the um, accessibility study. Uh, we, invent, we, in, we try to incorporate the uh, uh, risk seeking behavior uh, under the uncertainty travel time uncertainty in a classical play-based accessibility. We use the uh, healthy care accessibility as a, a case study. Uh, it is the classical uh, folding catchment approach. We extended this approach by incorporating the uh, uh, reliability concern. Uh, uh, due to the time limit, I, I give it very briefly. That this is key point that is we we extended the classical approach by incorporating the uh, reliability concern. That is the service area of, of the uh, hospital uh, are, that are determined not only by their location and transportation performance, but also by the reliability concern that is uh, caused by the travel time uncertainty. Uh, so this we made an extension by here we introduced the uh, the IPD concern here. Uh, this is a result I just give you very briefly. Uh, that is, the, we can consider the reliability concern and the different time of date effect on at a, a different uh, uncertainty. Uh, you may also refer to my, for the detail, you may also refer to my two papers published in uh, Transport Geography and uh, IJGIS. Uh, in uh, regarding how to incorporate the reliability concern under the travel time uncertainty. Uh, so now I move to the uh, conclusion. In in this talk, uh, I'm uh, we find that the 
um, play-based accessibility is widely used in large-scale applications and transportation planning, but it, this measure are uh, introduced in in half centuries ago, so it uh, oversimplified uh, uh, very complex, com very complex uh, facility choice behavior of customers. So we would like to introduce a new uh, research framework called uh, facility-based accessibility measure to explicitly incorporate uh, uh, citizens' facility choice behavior in this play-based accessibility. And I also uh, introduced three case study to illustrate how to incorporate uh, uh, facility choice behavior in different um, accessibility evaluation applications. Um, for the first study, how to have many, uh, many uh, extensions, how to uh, first one, how to extract the facility choice behavior through the big data mining or integration of big data and small data are, uh, are important for the study uh, for different uh, accessibility evaluations, not only including the full accessibility, but also including the uh, rest, uh, healthy hospitals and uh, education facilities, etc. In the the second point is how to incorporate the facility choice behavior into the evaluation of accessibility to different urban facilities, including not only including the full accessibility, but also the hospitals and shopping centers, etc. And um, this is uh, the end of uh, my talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so uh, much. Dr. As a whole. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so sorry, so due to the time limit, you're unable to like go to the details for the second and third case study. But it's already very inspiring work uh, for the first case study. And Dr. Bian just uh, uh, pub, uh, the type, uh, post like the link of your first paper. Uh, so everyone feel free to access the, the first uh, the publication of the first case study. And uh, Dr. Chen, could you also like uh, share the second and third paper? in the chat box so the audience can also access the other papers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, okay, uh -huh. so this is a Q&A session. Uh, any questions, you can just either type your question in the chat box or uh, unmute yourself. All right, so maybe I can start first. Uh, hopefully, so we have more questions coming up soon. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chen, thank you so much for your work. And I do have a question regarding the first case study. Uh, it's a question about the survey. Uh, so I see that it seems like the surveys are were conducted in highly populated area, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how, however, it seems like the lower level of the photo retail uh, retails are distributed like far away from the central region, right? So do you think it is possible to cause some kind of bias uh, by the survey? Yeah, um, that's really, uh, really a good question. Um, in this study, we conducted, we conducted a, a survey for 18A representative food retailers because the uh, total population of the um, food retailers in Wuhan is up to uh, 79,000. That is very huge. Uh, for, for each uh, retailers, we, we need to collect more than 20 or 13 uh, customers to answer their, where are they come from and what's the travel distance. So, so this is uh, uh, feed uh, investigation is very um, time consuming and labor intensity. So we we cannot uh, collect a very huge uh, uh, data set for for this uh, survey. 
So the, they have uh, some bias, I think, for this representative who they tell us. Um, for the, how we conduct the uh, sampling, uh, maybe we, we, we try to uh, make it uh, uh, representative. Uh, we, we, we made a random samples, uh, not only cover the uh, city center, but also cover the, uh, most of the rest, uh, uh, city, city areas. Uh, we, we do have uh, a few <laughs> representative fully tell us in, in the suburb and uh, rural, uh, rural areas, but the, the representative, uh, most of the uh, fully tell us are in the, in the urban areas. Yeah, and I think it, have, it may have a bias. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, okay, so yeah, we have a question from Dr. Bao. Uh, could you just check the chat box and also, I can also read. So his question, first question is, have you considered neighborhood factor such as uh, including geospatial weight for machine learning models? Uh, yeah, this is also very good uh, comments. This uh, in this study we uh, we did not consider we did not consider the the uh, social economy uh, character of neighborhood, uh, but we did consider the um, did consider the building environments and the transportation accessibility. Uh, this uh, they have a fifteen. Uh, Factors we already consider, uh, because in, in in our in our case study, it's difficult for us to to assess the very detailed social economy um, uh, factors in, in Wuhan. So we in we, this study we did not consider it. Uh, I think if in, that is a further study we can we can incorporate this uh, social economy factor in 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 each. Uh, communities uh, or neighborhood uh, by incorporating land in our uh, uh, machine learning model, we can we may we may we may we may get a better uh, uh, accuracy. I think. Thank you, Dr. Bao. Yeah, talk about just uh, add another uh, comment is uh, yeah. The, actually, he's uh, thinking about the question is about the GOI models how. Have you think about to use some geo geo AI models to improve like the current machine learning models? Yeah, that is another good uh, comments for our first study. In this uh, in this study, the data set is relative uh, relative small, um, mainly for the label data set. We only have a 18A, 18A representative uh, facilities. Uh, based on the previous study, the uh, Chaji SG boost or, uh, or, or and the uh, related um, related uh, classificators are uh, best uh, model for this uh, relative small data set. Uh, in in our first study, we we used the. Uh, uh, mobile phone data for 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 hospital study. We I think we we may use a, a deep learning uh, approach for conducting the uh, for conducting this kind of uh, classification. That is the, uh, because of our data set limitation, so we cannot use a, a more advanced deep learning model or GI AI model. All right, thanks. Uh, uh, do you have more questions from others? Uh, if not, I think I talked about I have a, one more question about like, uh, have you also done any research in consumers hierarchical structure? Yeah, this is uh, another very good uh, comments. Um, in this study, we do not consider the customers uh, behavior difference among different people group. Uh, I think this is uh, really a good extension uh, for uh, 
um, for my first study uh, to consider these different uh, uh, behavior uh, dimension. Thank you. All right. So I think, uh, Doctor. Oh, okay. Uh, Doctor Xiao uh, He mentioned he created a WeChat group, which is uh, focusing on accessibility, and he gave a link here. Just feel free to join this group if you are interested in the accessibility research. Uh, all right. So we have to stop here today. Uh, Doctor Chen, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And could you, uh, Doctor Chen, could you also like type your like uh, email address? In the which yeah. in the in the group, the chat group. So that yes. yeah. yeah. I provide my Oh, thank you. This okay. is my uh, this is my uh, email address. Uh, I hope um, uh, we can contact uh, after the uh, webinar. Yeah, thanks again. So yeah, I think this is the end of today's webinar. Just please uh, pay uh, close attention for our following webinar next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.